it's part of a hadith this is Qudsi hadith hadith Qudsi and as you remember we mentioned hadith Qudsi means it is narrated by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by saying Allah said so the wording is from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the meaning is from Allah by the way the Quran and the Hadith Al-Qudusi and the Hadith Al-Nabawi they all from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala but they are very distinct and this is also another proof that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not making anything from his own uh, there is something that is Quran and there is Hadith Qudusi and there is another Hadith that the Prophet وسلم, uh, is saying by him, from him, his own wording that's very distinct if he was only making it up people will make only one virgin uh, but not these distinct very distinct they are not mixed so this Hadith Qudusi means the Prophet وسلم, is narrating it by saying Qala Allah Ta'ala Allah Almighty says in this narration, Allah says, Man li waliyan, faqad bil harb. This is the beginning. Whoever takes any of my friends as an enemy, I will declare war against him. This is the beginning of the hadith. Very strong beginning. Huh? And then he's saying, it's saying, وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا افْتَرَدْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ that the best act that my servant can uh, do to get close to me is my obligatory actions is the obligatory uh, salah obligatory uh, zakah obligatory uh, deeds this is number one and this is our uh, main topic of today is the most important deed that anyone could do is what Allah made ob obligatory and then he's saying وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهُ and then after that my servant will uh, offer extra deeds until I love him or love her so the, the point here is priorities Allah in this hadith wants to turn our attention is do the first things first most important is your duties if you get an employee who's supposed to do one two three as that person's main tasks this person is supposed to be one and uh, to do one two three and then in their leisure time they could do some other things this person will not do their one two three and they will spend the leisure time doing dusting cleaning organizing habibi you need to do your obligatory parts first you do your main tasks and then do the other additional uh, secondary tasks allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is turning our attention here to the same is do your obligatory ones first do it right and then start offering extras there is no point of someone Huh? not feeding the family not bringing the healthy food but they're just bringing you know, you know soft drinks and some uh, snake you know uh, uh, snacks for them there is no point you see this person is is completely confused you're bringing snacks and soft drinks and you are compromising the meals the food the real food this is wrong priorities and unfortunately some people could also fall in the same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying Salatul Fajr, Salatul Dhuhr, Al Asr, Al Maghrib, Al Isha is more important than any other Salah there is no point of standing in prayers at night the whole night and then sleeping and not making Salatul Fajr it's a big waste it's a big waste Salatul Farida is more important. The obligatory Salah is way more important than the Nafila, than the extra Salah. There is no point of making Taraweeh every day and wasting your Farida, Salatul Isha, for example. There is no point of not coming to make Salatul Isha on time and making sure that you make Taraweeh on time. This is, this is complete. Huh? 
confusion. This is wrong. This is wrong. If you make the whole taraweeh every day in Ramadan, but you compromise your farida, your obligatory salah, you are a loser because you lost the most important. Because maybe the whole taraweeh is not equivalent to the five daily salah. People who could make the only the fard, only the obligatory salah, do it right and abstain from haram, this is great. This is better than doing a lot of extras while you're compromising the main things. This is the rule number one in Islam. This is the Hadith Al-Qudsi is saying, do your obligatory ones. This is one most important reminder for every one of our brothers and sisters. Take care of your obligations first. Before you uh, do extras, do your main ones. Before you go to the uh, snacks and the other uh, extras, go for your meal. Eat your main healthy uh, meal and then go for a little bit of sweets, a little bit of that. But don't jump in the sweets and desserts and tataif and uh, kunafa before you get your main meal, that healthy one. Otherwise, you're hurting yourself. Yes, that's nice, but it's not, in, uh, it's not right. You're wasting the whole concept. So, number one, get your obligatory ones, get your duties first, and then go for the extras. Another thing is, half of Ramadan is already past, right? And now we are in the other half. Uh, there's no such a thing. It's just another 15 days past and we are another 14 days or, or 15 days, right? But what happens, and you know this sometimes, people are more energetic and willing to do a lot at the beginning. And once, you know, you get close to the end, uh, you start getting less. And we notice that. In the masjid, we had maybe... The masjid is full at the beginning of Ramadan. S slowly, it looks more the, like, you know, the soccer <laughs> games. Like every two rakahs, you find people leave. Every, whatever, people start uh, leaving the fields. No. See, while we are getting close to the end of Ramadan, this is the time to collect your prizes. This is the time uh, to prove yourself. Because you know that one day of Ramadan is ex exactly like our whole life. As, we, as you know, in Ramadan days, you, you abstain from food and drink and your desires. By keep saying, well, when you want to drink or eat, you say, no, 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 no. Not now, let's wait until Maghrib. Huh? Not now, later. Uh, no, no, I'm not, I cannot eat and drink. I cannot take it if someone offers you something. No, I cannot eat and drink. Uh, until Maghrib. Just like that you do during the whole life. You stick to the rules and say, no, this world is a place of testing. I'm going to be patient until I meet Allah, until the hereafter. This is exactly the same. So you want the end to be good. Because that's what happens. The Prophet Sallallahu gave us very serious uh, uh, notification. He said, Inna irrajula la ya'malu that a person could be very uh, active in doing good deeds throughout his or her life. Right? And towards the end, they give up. فَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ فَيَدْخُلَهَا a person will do a lot of good things, very, looks good, the way we see it. And towards the end of that person's life, they start doing evil stuff that will lead that person to hell. Take an example of fasting day in Ramadan. A person fasts from uh, 3.30 in the morning, and then at 3.30 Asr time, Someone will say, I cannot continue. After 12 hours, they will say, I will give up. I'm going to go and eat and drink. And worse than that is someone comes at 6 o'clock or 6.15 and gives up. It's only 15 minutes left. 
But you know what? That person gave up. خلاص, I cannot. I want to eat and drink at 6 or 6.15. They break their fast. What do you call that person? Silly. Silly person. Wasted 15 hours of fasting for the sake of the last minute. Ah, some people do it in life. The Prophet said that. In A person will do good deeds that lead to paradise the way you see it but towards the end of their life they will change it's the end my brothers it's the end what counts it's how you conclude how you close your life how you close your book of deeds someone doesn't do any good deeds but the end the Come and do good deeds. You have seen this brother, this brother in, in Belgium who was 90 something, a, 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 a Jew who became Muslim at 90 something. SubhanAllah. Allah knows best. And the same, it's the conclusion. It's the way you conclude your fasting day. It's the way you conclude your Ramadan. It's the way you conclude your training. Uh, your training session. This Ramadan is your training. It's your session. It's how you conclude it. Uh, it's what you really, it's your guts. It's just like marathon. It's a race. You know in a race that we have, and you have like a thousand people, how many people will be left at the end? Not the thousand. You always have a hundred people only. Ten percent or even five percent will continue to the last. But you know what you need at the last? You need the stamina. You need your passion to continue at the last because you know the last few meters huh? is really the judging factor. It's there, it's then you need to put your whole energy and make your last jump. And then you will raise your hand and say, yes, I did. Yes, I passed it. Yes, I made it. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ told us. Nisa'imi farhatan. That the fasting person uh, will have two uh, instances of joy. Main two instances. When they break their fast, why we are happy when we, make, when we break our fast? Because I did it. So when you break your fast, you said, I did it. I was strong enough. I did uh, conclude my day properly. And I did this day just the same way when you meet your Lord and the, the, the main joy that you will have the second one is when you meet your Lord because you're gonna get the greatest prize you're gonna have a place for you only for you it's called a a gate in paradise only for you the fasting this is only for you to enter enter Jannah from there and get you presents and gifts in there when you meet your Lord you're gonna be happier because you did conclude your life your life well and you will meet Allah very happily this is why the second half we should do more we should be patient and this is why we need to be consistent huh? be consistent do your salah on time do your zakah finally what the Imam highlighted is when we have the obligatory matters, is it enough? Shall we abstain from doing extras? This was not the message of today. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's do your obligatory ones and then add more to it. Because you know the example was, he said, someone brings the fruit, you go to the market and buy some good fruit and bring it to your family, right? Someone will bring anything and just put it like that and put it in the table not clean not presentable and so on mm, just eat it how many people will eat that very few you're just gonna you know do that and maybe eat it whereas if it's clean and cut and chilled and cold you put it there with knives and forks and things and uh, people will will come and get it how many people will buy these expensive chocolates because it's packed very well it's presented very well they know the wrapping sometimes is more expensive than that chocolate itself you know I don't want to mention some names but really 
yeah, sometimes it's the packaging that will uh, get you to buy and pay the price. You go to this nice, you know, packaging and you get it because the packaging is great. This is the sunnah. This is the extra. You make Salatul Fajr, uh, you enjoy it and you say, I want to offer two more. You make more. You make Salatul Maghrib, uh, the fard first, and then I'm going to do more. You offer two more, then you are happy. Then you have some savings. Then you have some extras in your credit. You make Salat al-Dhuhr. Before you come in, you prepare with two. You make it, you offer two more, and so on. That's the beauty of extra. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ You do extras, Allah will love you. Allah will get you close to him. Huh? And Allah will accept it from you. But don't forget the priorities. Do your obligatory ones. Eat your meal. Eat your healthy food and then get your sweets. Uh, make your salah and then uh, pay your zakah and then make iftar al saim Right? There's no point of feeding people. This is great. But don't forget your zakah. Your zakah, the money Allah gave you extra to pass. Pass your zakah on and then give more. Allah will love you more. Make your hajj. First, make your obligatory hajj, and then go for umrah and hajj and as many as you can, as, as, as much as this process, you know, law allows. And I, I suggest that you don't do many hajj, let someone else do it after you make your farida hajj. This is how it works. We are a disciplined ummah. We are very organized ummah. We are not just, just come to the masjid, put your car anywhere, throw your slippers anywhere. No. The Prophet ﷺ said, no, don't do that. Come to the masjid with tranquility. Be organized. Be mindful of your fellow Muslims. Don't hurt Muslims outside and inside. By your, leaving your cars anywhere, slippers anywhere, jump on your people's shoulder. We are very organized ummah. We are disciplined ummah. We are the ummah of peace and respect. Respect of people, respect of things as well. This is a reminder when we are coming to the end of Ramadan. Let Allah see of us more, more discipline, more dedication, and more sincerity in doing things. Let's do it and package it properly and present it as Aisha. I cannot but give this example. Our mother Aisha, when she used to give sadaqah, she used to clean the, the currency and put some perfume. This is another level of uh, things because she's, she's, you say, Allah receives it first before the needy. Allah takes my sadaqa before the needy person. So I want to clean it and put some perfume on it. Do that. Let Allah see some good things from us before the end of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring peace to our brothers in Syria, in Palestine, in Yemen, all around the world, and to this land. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa salli lahum wa barik ala Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.